Tim, let's uh, go back for a second yeah. to uh, Rocky Horror Picture Show. Sure. I know they announced the, the film plans. You were doing the stage version. Why did some people advise you against doing the movie version? I think because it was my first film. Um, and I think they thought, rightly or wrongly, um, that it would um, be prejudicial to a film career. Um, and in the prevailing climate, they may have been right. Um, they, I think they were wrong. And I certainly wasn't about to sit there and watch somebody else play it. And in fact, I don't think that Lou Adler was really interested in doing the movie without my playing it. So if I hadn't done it, it would have, um, it would have not made the rest of the <laughs> cast very happy. Okay. When you decided to relocate to Los Angeles mm. and pursue your career in, in America, mm. how diff well, how, what were the first few weeks in LA like for you? Was that a, a big adjustment for you? It wasn't a big adjustment because I'd been coming here to work for 15 years. And, um, so I knew what I was in for. I mean, uh, um, um, and, and I wouldn't have moved here without, um, without uh, a sort of network of five really good friends who I knew would tell me the truth. Because <laughs> you really need that here. Um, and I was very familiar w w with being here. And in fact, in the middle 70s, I had an apartment here. And I sort of lived between here and London, which was a bit early in my career to do that, um, and fairly confusing. And I couldn't really afford the plane fares, so <laughs> so it was a bit early. But so I, no, I knew what I was uh, what I was in for, and I found the adjustment very easy. Now, with the shadow, uh, it's a, a back lot type of film, and I've been on the Universal back lot, and I love walking around. There's so much movie history there. Do you get that sense of history when you're working there? Yes, one of the things I love about living in L.A. I mean, this was this is kind of the the, the perfect film to do in L.A. I mean, I'm probably. 10 minutes from Universal Studios. I love, you know, just driving up the freeway, getting off at the Universal City exit, going in and making a, you know, a Hollywood movie. Um, uh, in, in, a, in, a, in a place that's completely sort of rich with that history. And in fact, the last film that I, that, that, that I shot at Universal, it wasn't actually a Universal movie, it was a Disney movie, but we shot on that New York street on the back lot. Uh, for a film called Oscar, and um, the night that I was shooting there for the first day, the thing burnt down. Do you remember it actually yes. burnt to the ground? And I remember calling my mother. And my mother called me because she'd seen it on the news, and, uh, and, and she said, you know, when did it happen? And I said, well, it happened, you know, after we'd gone home for the evening. And there was this long pause, and she said, you weren't smoking, were you, darling? <laughs> it seems to kind of follow me around, because when I made Legend in, in, in England, we made it at Pinewood. And the biggest soundstage in Europe burnt down when we were doing Legends. And I think, I'm sure that my mother thinks that it's, that it's actually because I was sneaking a Marlboro somewhere. <laughs> you uh, get to fire a machine gun in this movie. And mm. I've been around machine guns when they're firing for films, and I'm amazed at how loud they are. Now, how awkward was that for you? Well, they are loud, and they actually, they actually sort of, you know, will give you sort of ear plugs. Um, which, which seems to me to rather defeat the object. I mean, I think that by the time you're ready to fire a machine gun, but particularly if you're as nuts as Farley Claymore, this character is, you know, you really want to hear it. Um, also, I mean, it was an actual period kind of Tommy gun. Um, and it was, uh, it was old and not very reliable. So it took so many takes to, to get it to actually work um, that by the time it was indeed working, I was really into it. <laughs> Well, we're doing a story on how children react to actors. Yes. Now, after Home Alone 2, <laughs> <laughs> how did little kids react to you when they saw you on the street? Well, <laughs> it's funny. It happens particularly at airports because, you know, if you're on the street, you can keep moving. <laughs> um, if you're in the supermarket, you can go to the next aisle. At the airport, you know, when you're sitting in that seat and the kid goes, <gasps> um, they, then they kind of nudge their mothers, and their mothers go, what is it? What is it? <laughs> <laughs> they, uh, they don't know, really quite know how to react, because um, they, all they know is that I was mean to Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, we're doing also a story on movies that have uh, changed endings. Mm. Now, you did a movie called Clue yes. that had three different endings. We actually shot four. Four, okay. Now, is that a very awkward thing for an actor to, uh, to go through? It was sort of fun, actually, because, um, you know, in each en ending, somebody else did it. In one of the endings, I, I killed everybody. That was, of course, my favorite. <laughs> but they didn't use it because it was sort of too obvious that the butler did it. But I, I was sort of running around the house maniacally, you know, murdering everyone. It was for heaven. No, I think it's fun. And one final question mm. is uh, movies on airplanes. I'm yes. fascinated when an actor is on an airplane and they announce that one of his movies is going to be the in-flight movie. Yes. How, how do you react when that happens and what, what I goes call on? for a blanket and put it over my head. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually, I love to watch movies on airplanes because I tend to watch them with the sound off because I think you can tell an awful lot about movie acting on, on, a, on a, an airplane screen because it's so hard to see it anyway and the sound is so appalling anyway. You might as well turn it off. And you really get a sense of how people are dealing with a camera. And I think it's a wonderful lesson in direction and, and in movie acting. Thank you. You, you. you speak in such great sound bites. I appreciate it. <laughs>